Hello everyone, welcome back to GLB Productions. Bruno Luce here, thanks for joining me. Now, in January of 2014, I put out a video entitled DI Boxes Part 2 Active versus Passive. And in that video, I went over the difference between active and passive DI boxes. I told you how to identify them and I gave some guidelines as to choosing whether to use an active or a passive DI box. And one of the key statements that I made during that video was this. I said, as a general rule, if you have an active source, you want to use a passive DI box. If you have a passive source, you want to use an active DI box. And the way that I defined an active source was any source, whether be it guitar, keyboard, etc., that is either AC powered or battery powered. A passive source is one that is not AC powered and does not contain a battery powered preamp. An example of this would be a traditional Fender P or jazz bass. Okay, now that video is now over three years old. In the time since then, I have come to realize that while that is a good general rule, there is a significant gray area and it's not really an exception to that rule, but it's something which you should be aware of. And that's why I'm making this video now. And that gray area concerns battery powered sources, specifically battery powered acoustic guitars. In other words, acoustic guitars that have an active preamp that is powered by a battery, okay? And the principal issue is that on some of these, even though they're active, the signal output level is relatively low. And as a result, if you run it into a passive DI box, there is sometimes not enough gain available at the mixer preamp to bring that signal up to unity gain. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna recreate the original setup from that January 2014 video, and I'm gonna show you the exception or the gray area and how you can work around it. All right, let's get started. Okay, everyone, so here we are. This is as close as I can get to the setup from that original video. As you can see, the mixer is different. It's an 802 VLZ4 as opposed to the original 1202. And the DI box that we're gonna use is the original JDI. The active DI box has been replaced with a radial J48. This is just my preferred choice for DI boxes. So the guitar that we're gonna begin with is the Takamine TSF48C and the settings are the same, right? Cool tube is at 50%, volume is set to full and the EQ is set flat. We're running from the guitar into the passive DI box and then into channel two. And as you can see, our channel gain is set at about one o'clock. We'll PFL the channel and if you watch the meters on the right hand side, Okay, so that's what I did in the original video. And as you can see, we have a nice healthy level, even with the gain set at one o'clock. And one of the things that I said in the original video was that in some places, what will happen is the sound tech there won't be that knowledgeable. And as a result, it's often best to use a passive DI with an active instrument because what you'll find is that the gain is very similar to that which is required for a dynamic microphone. And that is still correct, okay? So one of the things that we also said was that the TSF48C has a very hot output. And as a result, it's an ideal candidate for something like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a Yamaha AC3R. Now on this particular guitar, the output is significantly lower than that on the Takamine, right? So we've got EQ is set flat, volume is all the way up. 
Um, the SRT modeling is set to type 2 and the blend is set to about 70% pickup. So now, we haven't touched the gain, check this out. Okay, so one thing that you'll notice is that there's quite a bit, um, the gain is relatively low, okay? So if we bring this up, right, we're looking to be around where the level set is. Okay, nearly there. Okay, so as you can see, our gain is now approaching 3 o'clock. On this particular mixer, we are still all right. But my experience in the field has been that sometimes with this particular guitar, the AC3R, with this passive direct box, there is not enough preamp gain to get a healthy level at front of house. And another thing that should be mentioned is that with budget mixers, you don't want to be operating at uh, extreme gain settings. In fact, I tell people that more than three o'clock is not a very good idea. And the reason for that is that the gain on these mixers uh, tends to be somewhat non-linear. So once you go over three o'clock, sometimes the gain jumps sky high and you can get sudden and uncontrollable feedback. So the solution in this case is simply to switch over to an active DI box. Let me do that now. Alright, so now we've switched over to the J48, which is an active direct box. As you can see, our phantom power is on. Now, let's check what our signal level is. Remember, we haven't touched the gain. This is the gain from the passive DI. Let's uh, hit the pre-fade listen and of course <laughs> we're completely dimed out now as you can see right so we need to bring this back all right and still high all right so as you can see that we now have brought the gain back into a much more usable range okay and the gain at 11 o'clock is pretty typical for what you'd expect with an active DI box. And, you know, with again, with budget mixers, as the gain gets into that 2-3 o'clock area, it, the signal can often get real noisy because the preamps on these are not typically all that great, no matter what the manufacturer says. So, by getting your gain from the DI box and using less gain on the mixer, you've actually improved your signal to noise ratio. So what we've established so far is that having an active DI box is sometimes beneficial with low output active acoustic guitars. So now let's consider this. What if you could only choose one DI box, right? You have a variety of guitars and you need to choose one, which is reasonable, right? Because these are expensive pieces of equipment and not everyone can afford both. I would recommend that if you can only afford one DI box for acoustic guitar, it should be active. So the next thing you're gonna ask me is, hey Bruno, what about uh, if the TSF48C comes back into the picture? Okay, right, let's swap around. Okay, so now we're back to the TSF48C and as would probably be expected, we probably got a lot more gain than we need. Okay. Let's see here. All right. All right, so you'll notice that now we're right at the bottom of the gain range. And this is a problem that I alluded to in the original video, that sometimes active guitar into active DI box, you can actually overload the input of the mixing console. And I refer to the Yamaha MG series mixers, which are particularly prone to this problem. So what do you do? In this case, if the gain knob doesn't go low enough, the simple solution is simply to engage 
the input pad on the DI box, right? So what I'll do is I'll engage this. In this case, we have a 15 dB pad, and you'll notice that, okay, we can actually now raise the gain, right? And we're back in that sort of healthy, moderate range again. So the J48 can actually cope perfectly well with either an active or a passive source. So if you can only choose one DI for acoustic guitar, I'd recommend that it be active. Okay, so what have we learned so far? The first thing that we've learned is that with active acoustic guitars, there is a very broad range of output levels. There are some acoustic guitars like this one, the TSF48C, that output close to line level. And for those, the ideal match is with a passive DI box. We've also learned that there are some acoustic guitars like the Yamaha AC3R, where the output is a lot lower. It's closer to microphone level. And the ideal match for those is an active DI box. If you had to choose one, choose the active because then with the pad switch engaged, you can deal with the hot output guitars and you still, have the, uh, you still have the sufficient output level for the low output guitars. The other thing that I did not at all mention in the original video was that there is a significant difference in the sound between passive and active DIs. A lot of sound engineers that I talk to refer to that being analogous to the difference between dynamic and condenser microphones. With a passive DI, you're going to get a slightly warmer, slightly rounder sound, and this is due to the effect of the transformer on the uh, signal as it passes through. And a lot of people like this, right? Um, with this particular DI box, it has a Jensen transformer in it, which is renowned for its very, very warm tonality. On the other hand, with an active DI box, you're going to get a slightly clearer, slightly brighter sound due to the active electronics. And neither of these are good nor bad, they're just different. So you need to be aware of this difference. And to illustrate it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the TSF48C I'm going to run it through the passive DI box and then the active DI box so that you can hear the difference.
guys. So that's a revisit of the original active versus passive DI box video. I hope this has been useful and that you can see that there are always exceptions to any rule and there are always gray areas in life. So this has been Bruno Luce with uh, GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below or get in touch with me via my website or Facebook. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.